anybody deserves. Hey everyone, Shariah Mayfield here, candidate for Multnomah County Chair, and right behind me is the Harriet Tubman Middle School, and right in front of me is an abandoned homeless camp full of garbage. All right, everyone, Shariah Mayfield here, and I wanna show you this old homeless camp that is obviously abandoned and now left behind a huge pile of garbage. And I wanna ask you guys a question. Do you think this is okay? Is this acceptable? Is this what you deserve? Is this what the government should be giving us, this mess here? And it's all throughout the town, it's all over, and quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of it. I am so sick and tired of it, that's why I decided to run, because the government is not providing for the common welfare, it's not providing for the regular person. This is not acceptable for the people that we're living out here in this unhygienic uh, environment. And clearly the government hasn't cleaned it up and has not prioritized making this place clean, safe, and beautiful for all. This is an emergency, guys. This looks like an emergency to me. And why isn't the government treating it like the emergency that it is? We need to clean this place up. We need to get the people that are out on the streets into hygienic, humane situations because this is not humane. Nobody deserves to live in this. And we shouldn't deserve to be seeing this all over our town and I would prioritize cleaning this stuff up, making this place look more beautiful and giving people the options that they deserve to have humane, compassionate alternatives to this. That we have the status quo that we've become accustomed to, which is just not tenable or acceptable. Uh, by way of background, I'm, I'm an employment rights attorney. I do workers' rights uh, at a side firm that I operate and I also work downtown at Meyer Stevenson doing that work as well which is a great workers' rights firm. Uh, and then I also teach privacy law at Willamette Law, which is really information privacy related stuff. So wh what uh, platform am I running on? I'm running on a platform of rapid action to address primarily the homeless crisis and the livability issues attendant to that, so drug addiction, mental health issues, safety as well. Now, some of you might know that the county chair position does not have jurisdiction. Just say your name because I have your card. Renee Gonzalez. You're running However, for they are Portland City Commissioner C3. Collaboratively and with local law enforcement. Uh, come up with uh, I'm a father, small business owner in the city of Portland. So lived on the east side for 20 years. Deeply worried about decline in livability, uh, particularly brought about by crime uh, and uh, actually, out of control homelessness. Uh, we got to get these RVs moving. we got to get these uh, camps up and we've got to get more police on the street and we've got to get a lot of addiction National services out there. Work for him helped pass maybe by camera bipartisan that's legislation that's to curtail so mass maybe, maybe even the USA Patriot is, Act. So everybody in this room right now, and I'm looking, I'm hoping that there's nobody younger than me, but everybody in this room was probably sucked into the I, I'm not a bureaucrat. I'm not a politician. I'm a small business owner who knows how to get stuff done. I've led a number of organizations, including my business, a major nonprofit through the pandemic, a parents group that grew to 40,000 statewide to help reopen schools during the pandemic. So I, I know how to lead, I know how to manage. And found a couple of years doing trial work, appellate work, and this is where it kind of comes into the police part is I was doing police decertifications, I was doing civil commitment appeals, I was doing uh, uh, criminal appeals as well. I represented all the state agencies in pretty much any type of case, and, and importantly, I did prison work. And prison work is important because you really need somebody who understands the prison system. Currently, right now, we're having huge problems at the DA's office with lack of prosecution, not having enough prosecutors, and also not having enough criminal defense attorneys. And so, just say your name because I have the your card. Renee Gonzalez. You're running for Portland City Commissioner C3. And. Give me your best 30 seconds. I'm a father, small business owner in the city of Portland. Lived on the east side for 20 years. Deeply worried about decline in livability, uh, particularly brought about by crime and uh, out of control homelessness. We've got to get these RVs moving. We've got to get these uh, camps swept up and got to get more police on the street. And we've got to get a lot of addiction services out there. Maybe I'm, I'm just, this is my, my warm-up. So maybe, maybe even a better question is, in a couple sentences, what differentiates you from the current commissioner and other candidates? 
I, I'm not a bureaucrat. I'm not a politician. I'm a small business owner who knows how to get stuff done. I've led a number of organizations, including my business, a major nonprofit through the pandemic, a parents group that grew to 40,000 statewide to help reopen schools during the pandemic. So I, I know how to lead. I know how to manage. And you know how to lead. You know how to manage. Yeah. Okay. So we have not been recruiting for over a year. Now we're recruiting. People are signing up. We do have to do background checks. But the state is responsible for training our police. So one of the uh, requests, and I think this is something that uh, both Mingus Maps and the mayor are on board with, is to have some of that training, or, or a large part of that training, actually happen in-house. Um, it used to be that way, we can make that way again. Um, the, the problem is not so much the length of the training, which is a problem, but it's also uh, the amount of people that can be handled at the state level. Uh, the class is only so large and they do the training for everybody. Um, but we also need to bring back the police officers that left. And that's right, we had a lot of good police officers that left. We now are paying um, an incentive bonus for people that are hired. We need to pay an incentive bonus for people to come back. Um, and, and a lot of those officers were very diverse. What we had was the officers that have been here for a long time, they stayed. But the officers that have been hired recently, um, and some of those officers are very good and they show the diversity that we're trying to bring to our police force. They're the ones that left because they can get those jobs anywhere. So let's uh, incentivize people to come back. Let's make this an area where we can work, support our police. Once again, we need to have good police oversight. I agree with that. But let's support the police. A lot of them are doing good jobs out there. On the Citizen Review Committee, I listened to um, cases where the police were out there and they needed to use deadly force. And the stuff I see them doing day in and day out to save people's lives is, is amazing. Now, there are also heard complaints against the police bureaus. Some of them are not doing a good job. I mean, you have to balance the two. But let's support the police that are doing a good job. Let's hire back the police that will come back here in Portland. Portland's a great, great place. I doubt any of them wanted to leave Portland, but that work conditions were forcing them to do so. I'm sure we can bring people back. But it is going to take time, you know, and, and that's, there's no question about it. A hundred in, in a year is going to be difficult unless we pay, like, a, you know, probably $25,000 incentive bonus for people to come back. We can do that. We have enough money to do that. Um, but also long term, we need to put institutions in place so that we can hire, retain, and train in a way that we can keep up our police force. You know, we're about half the average of police per capita than the rest of the United States. Um, and, and so let's have that conversation. How many people do we need? You know, right now I'm, I'm hearing not enough because when people call 911, they're on wait for too long in life and death situations. We had a neighborhood fire that the neighbors had to put out because no one could answer. I believe it. I believe it. I just uh, read a story in the news. Uh, a, a woman was being assaulted, and somebody had pulled up and, and saw it. They called 911. Ten minutes it took to get someone to, to just to answer, not to respond. And they took care of it themselves. The woman had uh, pepper spray. She pepper sprayed the guy. Then they followed, and they were the ones doing the police work. And that's the problem. Our city is making you all do the work. You're out there cleaning up the encampments. You're out there cleaning up the trash. You're out there probably providing services to the homeless community. I know my neighborhood does. Um, trying to link people to services. You're out there reporting the crime, but it shouldn't be you all doing that. That should be our city, and that's what they're missing out on. Um, so you were first, sir. Don't you feel like we're putting a band-aid on an open artery on this homeless camp stuff? Because most of these people aren't even from the state. They don't have driver's license. The word's out. It's free to have drugs, using them. You're not gonna get busted. And we're dealing with it like it's something that is, you know, I'm, I'm empathetic to homeless people. I don't know how a lot of people even afford to pay rent every month, being the wages and the inflation and stuff that they are. But this homeless thing, this camp, these camps, has anybody gone out and talked to these people, find out where they're from? The, the point in time counts did, but they don't ask where they're from. And so, they have to. other states are doing that though. That's, that's an interesting thing. We don't ask them where they come from, but other states are saying, if you're shipping uh, homeless people here, and, and there are, California yeah. does that, I know for sure. Um, I lived in an area once upon a time where I know that people were put in buses to be shipped out to other places because they weren't wanted. And that's, you know, people need services, people need help, I understand that. But if California, or let's say uh, Orange County, 
no reason I'm using that, but maybe no reason, is shipping people here. Let's charge Orange County for the people that they're, if, if they're saying we came here from Orange County, we're really homeless, let's get them to pay for the fact that we're providing <laughs> services out here. Uh, but you're right, it is a ban. We've, we've, it's taken years of inaction on the part of our government to get here. It'll take years for us to solve it. It'll take everybody at this point in time. Whereas, you know, my opponent is divisive, I'm very much inclusive in this campaign because it's going to take the neighborhood associates. It's going to take all of you all to help. It's going to take um, individuals, including people in the, in the services industry, in the homeless services industry. It's going to take uh, developers here because we have to find property for them to live. We can do it, but it, it's going to take a while. But that law, the, the voting that drugs are legal in small quantities, needs to be repealed. Alcohol and meat is plenty. Anything beyond that, psycho, brain, all this shit that's going on, it's just crazy. So somebody needs to start with a, a vote to repeal this stupid drug law to where you can use meth and heroin and you get free needles and all that crap. It's, it's just feeding the frenzy, the fire. The drug cartels know it, all the drug dealers know it, and that's what's happening. Yeah. And, and you all know too, I mean, it's, it's obvious, right? Measure 110 is not working, and it's not working not because of the intent, but the way it was implemented. So they said Portugal, you know, did it right by legalizing it. Well, Portugal still ensures that people get treatment. There's all sorts of systems they have there from fines, from other things, to make sure that people actually get treatment. So it's legalized, but they get treatment. Here, we don't have any avenue of getting people into this treatment, and we're not even spending the money. Uh, last year, the Measure 110, $170 million, I believe, was supposed to go into some of these drug rehab things. Guess what? It still hasn't been distributed, and it doesn't look like it's going to be distributed until this year, until later this year. There's failings all around, but I agree. We need to work with the state and make sure that whatever this law is, however it's implemented, we get the best outcomes. You know, on city council, I, I agree with you. The law's not working. Um, I can't change that, but I can work with the state and make sure that we at least get the money to the right people to get the drug addiction services, if that makes sense. A lot of people don't want to, they just want to do drugs, period. Mm -hmm. and that's, we have, uh, you know, I think Shariah said that 52% of people were using drugs, and that's where uh, homelessness as a whole, for the individuals that are living on the streets, it's much higher, according to point in time counts. Methamphetamine is a scourge. I, I see it everywhere in the work that I do. The right. Well, the fact of the matter is, you can't help anybody unless they want to help themselves. Yeah. Well, so follow up on that. What will you do for the people that decline, refuse to go to shelters and or and or get help? Right now, it's well, that's okay. Don't worry. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. Will you Will you change that? Will yeah. Your attitude. Yeah. You, you have to. So I, 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 talk, I spoke recently with an individual, Kevin Dahlgren, um, who helped uh, um, Gresham, <laughs> helped uh, Gresham uh, um, address the homeless crisis that they have over there. And, and what he said was, you know, they have certain laws in Gresham as we have certain laws here. And they would go out to each encampment and say, we have a place for you to stay. We have a shelter for you to go to. And we will provide you the services that you need. We'll provide housing services, get you into housing, drug addiction services, mental health services. But if you're breaking a law, which there's a lot of laws out there, if you're breaking the law and you don't want to go to the shelter, um, we will prosecute you for that law. So, you know, that's what they're doing. Right now, he said 14 people are homeless in Gresham. He said 80% of the people, when they were faced with those choices, went to shelters. 80% went to shelters and 20% either stayed on the streets or went somewhere else. Um, and, and so with, with that sort of statistic, with 14 people right now unsheltered in, in um, Gresham, if you were to extrapolate the populations, that would mean only about 100 homeless people in Portland. And so let's, let's follow that work. So there's things that worked in Houston, there's things that worked in Miami, there's things that worked in San Diego, Salt Lake City, other places, Gresham. Let's do what works instead of doubling and tripling down on things that don't. Um, Two more questions, and then let me take the first one. I think Lens has taken on a lot. I know Goose Hollow has had a big problem with homelessness, but if you came up to the uh, Mount Scott Boulevard, you'll see what we've been dealing with for many years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not just in the last two years when COVID hit. This has been going on. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, we're just, we feel beaten down because everybody that we have come to, say when they're running that they're gonna really fight for us and they're gonna listen to us, but they don't. 
they don't, when push comes to shove, it's, it seems like they give in and they just, there's a great program, um, you know, at Bybee Lakes that can take on so many homeless people. It can also be a great example for what the city can do. They've got a budget for a database entry that is not happening in Portland. So you don't know where these people are coming from, where they're going to, um, what's being offered to them, if they're accepting, if they're not. Have you been over Bybee Lakes? I have, and it's an amazing Amazing facility. place, right? I, I'm telling you, yeah. it's a great example for the city, and plus it's cheaper going through their program than what the city of Portland's offering. Mm -hmm. So what I'm asking is, I know people come in and they say, they will listen to us, but we are, the people here in this room, we are really looking for someone that when it comes to negotiating and fighting for us, we really need that person because we have suffered a lot with uh, homeless being dumped in our area and it's just overlooked. It's like it's normalized and we're just done with it. Our, our properties, our values are going down. Um, and we're frustrated, but we do care for these people. We care. We have families and children and grandchildren of our own, but we can't even use our services here because it's unsafe. Yeah. And, and I, I hear you. I, I really but hear I'm you. asking, I want somebody that's going to fight for us and listen to the neighborhood. So l l let me say that I, I, I hear you. I understand. Um, your, your story is, is one that I hear a lot of. In, in throughout Portland. It's unique, but it's one that everyone is saying, our city government is not doing what we need to, we're suffering, and the people in the streets are suffering. Um, there's a lot of compassion here in Portland, there is. I talk to so many people that are working out there themselves that are happy to pay the extra 1% tax, you know, that, that wherever the money is going to, um, hoping it'll help the people, but it's, it's not. And it's, to, to, your, to your point just now, when I decided to run for office, one of my friends, Jesse Burke, she's the president of the Old Town Neighborhood Association and, and owns the Society Hotel over there. She's like, I need someone to, to die for me. And I was like, I, that's not what the job entails. You know, that's not. <laughs> but the, what she meant was you need people to fight because you're going to get a lot of pushback. And when I'm in office, I will stand up for what is right, what you're saying, what you're asking for, because we all know what the solutions are. We all understand what the problems are for sure, and we know what could be done. For some reason, it's just not being done right now. I tell people a lot that I'm running for office to put myself out of a job, and that's part of it is because I'm on a charter commission, so I'm changing, I'm recommending a change to some authority that our city council people have. But part of it is, I, I love my job right now. I have the most amazing job. I'm running for city council to improve things here, and that part of that is listening to you all and being responsive to you all. And part of that is putting into implement things that actually make a difference down the road, not just funding more things that are not making a difference. You know, you talk about Bybee Lakes. I was there when it initially opened up, and I was there not too long ago. Alan Evans is an endorser of my campaign, um, but so is Homer Williams. He went to San Antonio. He saw a shelter model over there, not too different from Bybee Lakes, actually, but they camped outside, and then they would come in. He came over here. He's like, it's working in San Antonio. Let's do it here. City Council was like, no, no, it's... it's that we're not going to do that. So now he has a transition sort of thing going on in Northwest. Um, uh, and, you know, even Bob Stoll, who's on here together, which are the conglomeration of these service providers, is an endorser of my campaign. What you see is a lot of these individuals that are working in the same field, sometimes at odds, feel that I can bring them together and make sure we get things done. And that's, that's what I'm here for. I'll make those tough decisions. But I expect all of you to be there at City Hall. When I get that pushback, and people are like, no, 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 let's keep the status quo. I, I'll need you all to write in. I'll need you all to be there and voice your opinions. So I'm not there by myself. We've been there. Yeah. yeah. Well, We've been there. I'll, I'll be there, too. Unlock the doors and those. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. One more question. <laughs> so, You've got 14 minutes left. All right. You and the other lady talked about making this pay for their crimes, answer for their crimes and their addiction. But the district attorney, how are you going to deal with that? Because he refuses to arrest and prosecute. And where do you propose to send them to address their addiction and rehab? Because the mental health, the mental hospitals shut down. I don't know where you're going to send them. 
So, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll let you follow up if you want. Um, I have a, have a little bit of time still left. So, yes, you, you're right. The, um, the district attorney prosecute. one prosecute certain crimes, um, but you know that's part of that's politics. That's not the fact that we don't have laws on the books. And so I think right now there have been conversations with the district attorney about what has been said in the past. Um, I certainly talk with assistant district attorneys in that office and, and understand what they're going through. <coughs> it's a long-term thing, so part of it is making sure that um, we, we put the political pressure on there to make sure that we do what's needed. Um, part of it is it not needed for you and I, but needed for the people on the streets as well to get themselves out of their addictions. Um, but uh, part of it is also working with whoever the new chair is, whether it's Sharia or, um, you know, I, I think that there's other good candidates, but um, we, need to, we need to make sure that we have um, a budget for the district attorney's office. Right now they're very short staffed as well and they, their budget has been cut for several years. I think for about 20 years, this is the first year where they've had a little bit more of a budget so that they can actually prosecute this stuff. So some of it is short term, some of it is long term where we have to work together to make sure that we get put into places, things that will happen. Um, some things we can do very quickly, some things it will take more time, and so with respect to the longer term vision of making sure that we can actually prosecute a lot of these crimes so that individuals that aren't back in the streets doing even more uh, hardcore crimes are addressed, um, that's going to be a longer, question, uh, longer problem. I, I'll be honest with you, that will take a longer time. The uh, district attorney is up for election in two years, um, he, you know, he's going to want to see things different than when he came in, and certainly he knows. Um, the error he made, I think, in saying that he was not going to prosecute crimes right away, and then that sort of took a life of its own. I understand that now he's had a different view on that, um, but there's, you know, the, the politics, the conversations will need to happen in order to make sure that we address the problems that we have. Um, and then, what was your second question? The mental health. Mental health. There's, um, there's not enough inpatient. We have outpatient services. So if you need someone to go inpatient drug addiction, um, there, we just don't have enough beds, we don't have enough facilities. But for outpatient counseling, Cascadia, Central City Concern, there's a lot of organizations out there that provide outpatient drug addiction counseling. Even OHSU will provide that. Well, I think the people we're talking about, outpatient is not an option. <laughs> it's a start. I agree. I agree completely. I wish I could build a, a hundred buildings in a short period of time, but to get them even to take Suboxone where the heroin is not going to be affecting them, that's a step. Heroin is not the problem. Yeah. Meth is the problem, and when you're addicted to meth, there's, there's no talking to you. No. Yeah. Well, you just have to lock them up and dry them up. I, I, I agree with you. They sound bad, but... <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I see meth a lot. I, the, the, in my job, I, I see that come up a lot, as, you know, and it's a scourge here. I've never seen it this bad. I've done the same job in California. I've done the same job in Houston, Texas. I, I saw a little bit of meth in California. Houston still had a crack issue a few years ago, um, but not so much of meth. Here, the meth is out of control, and part of that is, you know, making sure that the meth that's being dealt and brought into the state, we stop that. Part is making sure that you don't have people with drug addictions right next to people that are dealing the drugs. Um, we have to do these intervention techniques. Once again, it's not going to be easy, but we've got to take those steps. So I wish I could promise you that uh, a bunch of places will be open, and that's not going to happen, but at least if we can connect them to drug addiction services, if they can get like a few days of sobriety and start making choices about their lives, it's, it's a step in the right direction. And that's all I can promise. Uh, quick questions, sir. Right. Uh, will you make a promise to us here today that if you get elected, that you will let us know where all the money's going and follow that and what effectiveness that is. Because right now what we have is we have a, a homeless industrial complex and it's an industry. And that has to be exposed. I think we have a massive PR problem of misinformation. And I don't, I don't understand why Wheeler, <clears throat> Maps, and et cetera weren't out, out there fighting the DA, what have you, or before the 110 was passed, letting the or, or, Oregonians know what the impact would be if this thing passed. So we need someone who, on the city council, who A, is going to tell the citizens here in Portland exactly what's happening, bypassing the Oregonians, bypassing all these other 
biased partisan organizations. And then also phone the money and let us know where, where it is. You have my promise. And the reason I say that is I gave like a really abbreviated, this is not my usual speech because you all know what that's, you know, I, 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 I'm smart and I do all kinds of stuff and I have a job. That's, that's my normal speech, right? I talked to you all about the facts here because I think that's important. You already got some of the uh, issues talked about here. My, in my discussions, I talk about that. I actually reached out to uh, Dan, uh, Dan Ryan's uh, homeless services employee that he has in his office. I'm like, why can you not go to the Joint Office of Homeless Services website and see, one, how many beds are available in shelters so people can actually send people out there. Two, where the, where's the money being spent? Exactly. Um, we have so much money coming in from the city, from the county, federal. from the new services tax, federal money federal. coming in. Good luck trying to track it down. There's no way. I mean, we're probably succeeding in some things. We're almost certainly failing in a lot of things. Do we know? No, we don't. Do we, are those uh, different uh, service providers overlapping, kind of doing the same thing? Are they working together? No, there's no plan altogether. But we need to have, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll count on you to give us an account. A breakdown of where it's going because those people have to be called out. Yeah. It's okay if they're getting the money, but what are they doing with it? Yeah. What are they doing with it? Because yeah. we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. I agree. It's ridiculous. And I'll follow up his statement with the fact that you mentioned 1% <coughs> extra towards these services. I'm not willing to pay any more money until I know what money is being spent where. Oh, no, you should. What effect? <laughs> you should not. I'm looking at moving out of the city, out of the county, and possibly out of the state because of this. I, and I'm going to be frank about it the shit hole right down the street. It, it's a freaking mess. It needs to go, and we need somebody that's going to actually have some real straight talk and not mess around. Don't let anybody tell you, sir, don't let anybody tell you there's not enough money out there. There's more than enough money already. But why do we need to pony up more? No, you know, My property taxes yeah. in this neighborhood have doubled in the last 14 years. So what effect the, popu the homeless population, and not even homeless, the feral population has not decreased. It's, if anything, it's state level. It has not decreased at all. And sir, you should not pay more. Uh, uh, and that's not at all my platform when I said 1% or whatever. The 1% tax that's already being paid. I mean, I'm doing the math. It's about $50,000 per homeless person that we're funding right now. We can do better. You know, we can do better. And that tax will end in a few years. And, and hopefully by then we've got things cleared up and it won't be uh, uh, renewed. That's the goal. Um, stay in Portland. Vote May 17th. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll do what I can, sir. That's all I can say. Yeah, there's plenty of money out there. I agree with him too because like the four of us right here, we just live a block down across 105th and there's been some of those people up in yards looking in windows and my house, I've got a, I can't look out my living room window without seeing what's going on down there because we sit above NAF. And that's not normal, right? And it's not safe to drive down there. No. Sometimes there's kids on bikes. Window? Oh, I, 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 those vehicles, <laughs> those vehicles were on the south side of NAP, yeah. up against that park. The park, the, the Department of Parks or whoever manages that park down there came in, had those vehicles moved to the north side of the street so that the park could be accessed by the public. Now, if the city has the power to move the vehicles across the street 25 feet, why can't they have the power to remove the vehicles entirely out of the city? So that's that's Peabot. That's my opponent's in charge of Peabot, and that's what that needs to be that needs to be spread around the whole. Everybody, I, I gotta run to the next thing. I, I hear you. Trust me, I hear you. And we'll we'll make a difference in January of 2023. That's a long time, but please, please vote. Please visit my website. There's a lot more information on my website, votepudding.com. I wish I had more time to talk to you, sir. I understand the frustration. I really do. And I understand other people's frustration. I've experienced some of these issues myself. Um, there's an encampment not too far away from my house. We need to do better. We need to do better. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Chad go. Oh, Chad's okay. okay. Get back up here. Chad's hiding. Hiding. Are we? Yeah. I okay. <laughs> so it is 7:26. We close this down at 8:30. So you guys have plenty of time, I hope. Oh, I'm not quite talk to talk like You're not talking to talk to but he's either am I. Okay. Or the, or the other. Okay. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, and
And I said there's tablets on the table back there. If you guys want to just write, you know, your thoughts down, questions down. Good. Good. All right. Uh, my name is Chad Blizy. Uh, I'm running. I put my name in because uh, Portland has a major communication issue. Uh, they also have a problem with trying to tell everybody what they want to hear. Um, some of the stuff that I heard tonight, for example, uh, all the commission or everybody running for the position three, I reached out to every single one of them. The, you know, as soon as they put their names in, uh, and I've reached out a couple times, and I've invited them all to lunch. I said, hey, let's go to lunch. I'll pay for it. Just want to, you know, meet each other and see, get a feeling, because we're, we're we're candidates. You know, we're fellow candidates. Uh, Peggy, Dale, and Caroline, the only ones that reached back to me. So out of the response of the rest of them, it was, I'm too busy to meet with you, or just no response at all. So, so you kind of nailed a little bit there when you asked the accountability. So I, I keep hearing this as like a broken record. It's, it's uh, unfortunate. You know, so if they want to reach out to me, are they going to reach out to anybody else? You know, like, uh, so I find that concerning. So uh, part of the, the big reason why I did run is, as I do live in the Pearl District, um, we like the Pearl District, we love it down there. Uh, we can walk all over the place. Uh, it does feel a little intimidating sometimes going downtown. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big dude, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and I feel intimidated walking around think. down there. But, you know, so, uh, it, so yeah, it, it's nice down there. But when that young gal got shot last summer yeah. down, downtown waiting for food, the 18-year-old the 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 girl, girl that got oh, shot, wow. she was just waiting outside the food trucks. Um, the very next day, Council members and the mayor, particularly, it was on the news. I'm gonna have police officers down there nonstop, nonstop. You know, uh, we had a friend come up from Dallas, Texas, uh, and we went downtown. This is like two weeks later. We went downtown. I didn't see one police officer the whole night. So we, we went out to dinner and stopped at a couple of bars. We ended up coming back at the, about three in the morning. Not one, one officer the whole time. Uh, that infuriated me. I tried to reach out to the city council and I, all, all the commissioners I tried to reach out to and there was zero response. So uh, I find it really sad that there's no communication whatsoever. So, and I keep hearing over and over from people, I try, you try to get a hold of them, you get no response. Uh, <clears throat> what I do for a living now is I come into, uh, I restructure, you know, I, let me back up. I had a company for 15 years. I built a, a multi-million dollar company. I had about 50 employees. Um, my whole life I wanted to fly uh, since I was five. So <clears throat> about five years ago, I gave my company to one of the guys who worked for me for 10 years. Uh, and when I say gave, I just give it to him. I didn't, didn't want nothing out of it. Uh, I went back to school to be a commercial pilot. Uh, I did my bachelor's in aviation. Uh, I've always been under, I try to live my life as uh, if we make it to our deathbed, we'll regret the things we don't try, not, rather than things we do do. Um, and anyways, it's, it's, <clears throat> long story short, I ended up here. Uh, I, I know what it takes, and now, now in the position I'm in now, I come into failing branches and I restructure them. And, and I flip them around, make it profitable. And the only way to do that is through communication. You know, So uh, I communicate from with everybody all the way down to person that's cleaning the floors to the CEO of the companies, you know, uh, because communication is key. And right now they have zero open door policies at the city. If, if you try to go down there now and you talk think? to any of them, you think? There, there's no response, you know. Uh, Are they even down there? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> well, we've stopped. Afraid to come in. Yeah, well, we stopped that stop down there a few times, and it's all locked up. So, I, I, <laughs> yeah, there's nobody there. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's just odd to me. So, like I said, that's why I put my name in. I'm spending zero dollars on this. You know, I'm trying really trying to get my put my foot in the door. So, I know I don't really stand a chance of winning the election. Uh, you don't. But I don't feel because I'm not spending the money, you know, the, the, the hundreds of thousands. He doesn't have the money. advertising. I know. Yeah, I'm not doing all the advertising. It's just, just online stuff. Is there any know, being so. kind of debate with, with you candidates? Uh, you know, on I, TV? Had, I did go to one uh, last month. Uh, and it was, it was just me, Dale, and, and Joanne that, that showed up. And we had a really good conversation. They did like a tea party deal. Uh, we had a really good conversation, you know, and uh, that's what I really enjoyed. Um, it was Imagine Black. You can get 
I think the video is posting next week, so you can get on and kind of watch that too. Um, it was really cool. It, like I said, it was nice because it was a conversation. It went more from a debate or forum to really a good in-depth conversation between all of us with the mediator. Um, but anyway, like I said, the communication is number one to everything. Uh, I am, unlike a lot of the other candidates or, or, or people in office now, I take a zero, I have a zero policy uh, uh, against the homeless. I, I, I don't agree with any of the homeless being on the streets, period. Uh, right now we're raising, <clears throat> they passed that deal where they brought the 1% and 2% if you make more, uh, $2.5 billion over the next 10 years. So the way it's happening is, 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 is the money's being collected and being dispersed to the, the counties, yeah. right? If you get on, say, Multnomah website and see where they're spending the money, there's half a million dollars a year just on computer crap, you know? The hell are you spending half a million dollars on tech for the homeless? Like. The, that's the, for the homeless? That, that, that's, that's the funding with the homeless. For the homeless? It, well, uh, it's not for the homeless, it's for the people. They're so it's for, for the admi administrative fees. So if you add up all oh, the administrative okay. fees, they're spending millions and millions of dollars. So I find it concerning when I see lawyers and, and stuff like that running for office. Okay, so lo laws are written by lawyers for lawyers, period. How much money can they make and their buddies make? So Portland has major problem with, and, and, and the county, the state particularly, has a major problem with padding the pockets of their friends. That's right. You know, uh, it has nothing to do with the city, but the I-5 bridge, the what, $139 they spent on consulting. Like, consulting. And, and did do a Got damn thing. thing. You know? uh, then <laughs> I, I'll tell you right now, the city does the exact same thing. The city is, is, is blowing millions. Uh, Everybody keeps saying, oh, how much inflation, and you know, how much the property value is going up, and this and that. You know, the city has had to play a big part in that. The city, yeah, the city, uh, all these profiteers coming in, the city has been been helping these people out so much because how much can I get off? How much can my buddies make off this? You know, um, that crap's got to stop. Period. You know, so I believe in, in, in complete transparency. Like so, when I with my work now with restructuring branches, I, I include every single employee. I'm like, this is what this is what we're making. This is what we're doing every step of the way. You know, because I, I feel like it's important that everybody needs to know and everybody needs to be on the same page. Um, right now with the, the homeless issue, uh, I just watched one of the commissioners uh, on uh, People for Portland, and they're talking about when they're meeting together. If they're meeting every couple months, two, three, six months, you know, they need to be coming up with a plan and meeting regularly, We're talking about weekly, bi-weekly, you know. Uh, a lot of great groups with throughout Portland that are trying to do things for the homeless communities, you know, uh, but they're not, what we really truly need is to be able to bring, somebody that's gonna bring all these groups together and, and bring them to one and come up with a solid game plan that everybody agrees on. <laughs> You know, and then stick to that game plan. Right now, you have a hundred fingers going everywhere. Okay. And it's, it's zero effective, mm -hmm. you know. And I've told people, and many people, that I know myself, I can't go pick up two ton boulder, but all of us throughout the community, we could pick up a mountain and move it. You know, so it, it's, it needs teamwork. Right now, the city, there is no teamwork. Didn't they form some kind of new agency under the mayor to bring in Peabot? Oh, all these yeah, things. Yeah, it's, 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 well, we all know how, the, how, how Ted Wheeler is. Uh -huh. he, he spends all of his time blaming everybody else. It's always the state or it's Congress. Like, I implore Congress to do something. You know what? Take responsibility for what the hell you're doing. You know what I mean? So, if I, if I were, if I had to get on to the city council, I'll, I'll take responsibility for every single employee. Like, you know, you, you, if there's an issue, You'll see the mayor and, and other council members say, no, 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 not us, not us. I'll take full well, responsibility. Well, that's because they're in charge you know? of bureaus. They, they use the bureau <laughs> excuse. Yeah, they do. And then, you know, <laughs> and restructuring to a, a council form of government, mm -hmm. I agree and disagree with that, you know, because what they're talking about is basically, you know, because you'll have to say the city manager and everything else, so it's going to inflate 
pushing everything off. Yeah. And it's gonna be city manager's fault. And they're gonna go through so many city managers, yeah. they're gonna have to pay that pay that person, you know, a million dollars a year just to stick around, you know. Uh, but that's what it's gonna be, is just pushing all the blame because they don't want to take any of the I just heard from someone who's in band and they have the charter form. Mm -hmm. He hates it. They're trying to go to the commission form. And, and I agree <laughs> that the commission form gives more accountability. Yes. You know, and, well, and it should be giving more accountability. So, uh, I don't know. I just, like, <laughs> like I said, I, 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 I work full time. I'm not real involved and in, in dug into the city and stuff like that. So I don't know details. You, you know, if it was my it. job, then it would be, you know, then yeah. I would know every single deal. Uh, I'm kind of a micromanager in, in a good way. <laughs> so uh, every employee that I have is like, yeah, I love this because you know everything's going on all the time. Like, you know your steps ahead. And I'm always trying to help them, guide them, you know what I mean? So um, I'm the same way with the, with the city, you know. I, I ride around. Every year, I'd ride around a week with every single department and uh, just do ride alongs. Like, go with the police department, do ride along, you know, because the employees know what they need. Mm -hmm. Some guys, some people sitting in, well, I would say sitting in an office downtown. But it sound like <laughs> we don't do have that. them sitting so, in <laughs> But the commissioners, they, they have no idea. They're, they're just sitting behind a desk and they're like, this is what you need. And they're like, bull crap. Go out and ask the employees what they need. Uh, I was on the fire. I was a fire, volunteer firefighter for eight and a half years. Okay, uh, worked with a lot of police police officers through you know and, and state troopers stuff like that. Uh, particularly when we work bad accidents stuff on the highway. You know, uh, I don't generally. I, I don't think that there's a lot of bad bad officers out there. Um, I think what's going on now, particularly in this area, is they're treated like dogs. I've made made friends with a few officers. Yeah. And that's the number one thing they bring up. Because, you know, and they say, we get treated like dogs. They run us in the ground, they blame us for everything, and it's not so bad as that the commissioners are doing it, it's, or not so bad that just the community's doing it, but it's the commissioners too. Mm -hmm. So they are driving police officers away, you know? We see what happens when you defund the police. Got $15 million, it's, I mean, crime is just blew up, you know? Uh, and they keep advertising it too. So, oh, we're, we're short on police, we're short on police. Of course, the criminals are gonna start acting out more, you know, because mm -hmm. I get away with it, you know? I don't know how many times driving down the street, you see people just blowing through red lights. They're like, cops ain't gonna do a damn thing, you know? Uh, <clears throat> but community, as far as like law enforcement, community involvement is huge, in my opinion. When I was on the fire department, we'd go to every school and meet with every single classroom for fire prevention month every October. Uh, and we do that because when, we, when we're all suited up and we have our, our oxygen masks on, uh, we look really scary, you know? We look like aliens to kids. Uh, so the purpose was going and familiar, getting them to, to trust us and feel comfortable with us. So if there ever was a fire, they went hiding under their bed or something like that, you know? Uh, I think that's something that really needs to be implemented here in Portland, too. But they also need the police officers to be going to the schools and, and, and building schools. relationships. Well, they used to, yeah. they don't have enough to do that yeah. now. They're all so busy. And well, you're right, because they're so short -handed. They don't have enough <coughs> to go out and do yeah. that. And, uh, you know, so it's just a lot of that community involvement and then forcing officers to walk the streets a couple days a month and going to all the businesses, handing out their cards, uh, and, and just building relationships with people, you know? Because if, if Mary, looks out her window, sees Johnny out on the corner with a gun in his pants, if she feels like she's friends with a police officer or in front of the situation, she will call and say, hey, Johnny has a gun standing out on the corner. You know, so right now, none of that's happening. There's no involved community involvement, stuff like that. When we go to the police department, as far as the police uh, and, and degrading and treating them like crap, that's why they're leaving. You know, uh, offering a $25,000 hiring bonus, uh, I talked to not, I talked to one of the, one of the sergeants, okay, and he says, I've been here for 15 years, or around the police department, 20 years. And he's like, uh, he says, he says, what about me? You know, he's like, I don't deserve any sort of incentive or bonus or anything like that. Just new people, just and I agree 100 percent. You know, like I, I am not for giving big bonuses to, to new officers. I, I'm totally no. against it. I, I, I'm for treating the people that we have like humans and treat them fair to begin with, you know. Uh, so we have a major problem with law enforcement that the city has created themselves. 
And why do you think they don't want to wear cameras? <coughs> it's because, they, I mean, in my well, opinion, uh, it's, it's because they don't, they don't trust anybody to, you know, they're afraid. They're afraid anything they do would be wrong. Yeah, and, well, it's and not the cameras. It's the city that doesn't want them. You know, and they, they need, you know, body cameras do not, protect, they don't just protect the community, they protect the officers yes. too, yeah. which is great. So I had a, a real good friend of mine for years as a sheriff, um, and he was telling me about uh, one of the cities within the county uh, wanted to implement cameras, and so the council asked him to come and talk to him about, about body cams, and it just turns out the sheriff had pulled over one of the council members at one time. And the council member was just, he was, just, he was, super, he was super drunk and, and belligerent and everything else. And, uh, so he goes and he explains to him, he says, yeah, no, these, these don't just help the people throughout the community. You know, transparency, what's going on, but it helps protect both sides. And he started, and then, uh, so the one council member that, that had the run-ins was like, was, no, I'm totally, you know, totally against him. And he was like, I got a video that I could show all of you guys, <laughs> just an you know, opinion. And boy, that, that council member switched his tone completely, and then they got the cameras. But uh, I, I think body cameras are, are super important, and they protect, and, I, and the officers that I've talked to, they say the same thing. They're like, hey, it helps us, it protects us, you know? You know, the city doesn't want the responsibility of governing them. So they're trying to figure out, well, who's gonna be in charge of the video, and who's gonna do this? That's, you know, it, to me, that, that's an, that, that should be an internal deal with the police department. They should be responsible for holding the data, but the, 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 the oversight of the city needs to be the ones to review and share the videos and not cover up and hide everything, you know what I mean? Um, and the unions, too. Unions can be a pain in the butt, the police unions. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not the type of guy that, that puts up with this stuff like that, you know? They, they, they try to muscle around. Uh, I'll work with the unions just fine. I, you know, I'll work with them just fine, but I'm not going to put it just lay down like they do now. Say, so, oh, okay, you don't want that? We're sorry, we're not going to do that. Bull crap. Uh, another person brought up, as far as we're talking about law, uh, the uh, county, the city and the county, the, the district attorney. So, district attorney is funded by the county, right? Uh, I believe in accountability. Our city attorney, City attorney would hate, would hate me if I was in the position. <laughs> I keep them busy all the time, and it's people, people you know, because uh, I, I believe that laws are meant to be changed. You know, uh, things, if you don't like something, you change it. Um, as far as the county goes, we don't have a whole lot of control over them, but we can sure as hell sue them. You know, force them to do their job. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of that right now where somebody made the comment that they're not doing their job, they refuse to, to prosecute anybody. That's unacceptable. Yeah. I don't understand why Joanne Hardesty has so much to say about the police. It's not her, uh, her jurisdiction. jurisdiction. It's not yeah. under her. It's not what she's in charge of. She, but she wants all. to be. But she wants to be so badly. You know, like she kept saying she two years ago, bad. "I want it so bad." You know, Ted needs to hand it over to me, and blah blah blah. <laughs> if if she had her way, she'd fire the whole damn police department and hire the street street response people. Which street response? I'm totally against that too. You know, if you're going to be out on the streets, you need to be a police officer. You don't know what kind of situation you're being. I'm not. Uh, I'm not opposed to to de-arming police officers uh, for certain situations. Uh, say for if you're wandering, walking around downtown, patrolling downtown. Okay, uh, but uh, street response deals and stuff like that is just silly. It's not, it doesn't work, it's not working, it's making zero <laughs> impact, but they want to continue. They're seeing somewhere. two people a day, come on. Yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm just they guessing stuff. There's percentages to tell you, all street responses, you know, up 50%, they don't tell you how many actual people do use percentages. Yeah, right, it, it, it's not. Crap. So. Well, the big problem is they went and looked at Cheers, which is <clears throat> dreadfully successful, and Eugene, Cheers mm -hmm. is doing a phenomenal job. But, oh, wait a minute, they're not doing it quite right. So we're going to go back to the committee and we're going to rewrite it and show them how to do it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they were at our meeting, when was it, Char? Oh, Pete, 
Portland, three responses, yeah. but at several of our yeah. meetings, yeah. like four. Well, no, but yeah. the last one where he had to confess that they were oh. paying one and a half people a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 One and a half yeah. people a day. Is that yeah, crazy? Last summer, Isn't that crazy? We're the water and we're seeing one and a half people a day yeah. on an average in an eight hour shift. It's not. And what are you providing? Well, we're taking cookies. And water. Well, we're, we're trying to make them feel more comfortable with being in the situation there, which is BS to me. You know, we're I don't. I can do that. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. In the, I, you I, shouldn't I, do that. Though. You shouldn't. Yeah. My well, opinion. Yeah. My opinion is we shouldn't be enabling these people. Yeah. No. And that's what exactly what they're doing. Yeah. You know, and then every time you turn around, with Joanne particularly, it's it's either a sexist or a racist thing because mm -hmm. be, that's why you disagree with me and. Uh, that's why you're against the homeless and this and that. It's like, no, you know, uh, the definition of sanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting it's different results. Different results. And that's exactly what they're doing. And that's exactly what the public's been doing by electing the same people. Not that Joanne, <laughs> this is her first term, but uh, it, it's just, it, it's same to me. Um, and like I said, enabling, we're, we are enabling the homeless. Huh. We are, I mean, period. Yeah. I, I stop, I, I used to stop on regular and be like, hey, do you want to make $25, $30 an hour? Here's my card. Call me. I will give you a job. Not one. I probably handed out 150 cards or something like that. Zero people have responded to me. Zero. You know, so it, they want to be homeless. They want to stay on the corner. Absolutely. You know, I, I'd like they to. Want to. They want to stay on the subsidy so they can buy their drugs. You know, I'm gonna, I, and I know that I'm going to anger a lot of people. I'm not, I don't want to make everybody happy. I care less. If, if I'm not. If I'm not pissing off 40% of you, you're the right person. Then, no. then, I'm, then, I'm, not doing, I'm not doing my job. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I continuously say, you know, majority rules because that, that's the structure of government we live in. And boy, I keep getting a lot of kickback on that. You know, a lot of people are very angry about it. You know, uh, uh, Har Joanne Harsey was angry at me when I said that a couple weeks ago. She gets angry at a and lot of I was just people. like, I was like, you know, you guys keep keep doing the same thing over and over. It's not working, and then you're coming up with the excuses why it's saying that it is working, and I'm like, you're gaslighting me. There's, there's no, it's, that's what you're doing. Didn't they get PSU yeah. to do a survey? Yeah, they, they, they kind of tend to put a ton of them, they spend a ton of money. But like you were saying, with the paper trails or the money, follow the money, you're going to find a lot of corruption in Portland. I'm not making any yeah. accusations, but you're going to see. If we had somebody like me that was doing the job all the time, uh, it, I, I would suspect that you'll see a lot of people uh, being charged. You know, so well, you're a business, you're a business man. You know where, where you talk yeah, about yeah. Money. I follow the trail and big time. It's and the that's, homeless <laughs> industry. Now. Yeah, everybody's hopped on the homeless bandwagon. Oh yeah, it's I mean, there's major all the money, and, and these are the friends of the politicians and their friends that are yeah. handing out the money it, to them. Two point five billion over the next ten years. Uh, okay, uh, I'm sure. We all have YouTube and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the foldable houses that open up, beautiful. They oh, come furnished Elon and stuff like that. Elon Musk. Uh, there's another company that's doing it too, okay. but they're fifty thousand yeah, dollars. You know? So you say take a lot that we already own on the uh -huh. edge of town. Uh -huh. You know, you set them out there, say ridiculous amount of money, say fifty thousand dollars just to hook up water to each one of them, which should be closer to probably ten thousand dollars, something by the time it's done. But uh, if, so if you spend the 50 and then 50 to hook them up. That's 25,000 of those units that they could put up. Mm -hmm. uh, like, mm -hmm. uh, nobody's looking into them. Nobody no, cares. They say, you can't stick them. You can't push them. That might out. solve the problem. Yeah, it might. It might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you, you, you know, the money. <laughs> yeah. I keep hearing, well, you can't just, you can't push them. You can't push them and yeah. force them to go places. Well, I, I disagree with that. You, 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 I don't, I don't care even if it's just a big, Homeless lot where they set up their tents <laughs> on the edge of town. And I mean, on the edge of town. They don't need to be in the city at all. Yeah. yeah. Once you do that, ban them 100%. No camping, street camping, period. Don't care. Um, and then. Uh, Unless they're out raving and pillaging your neighborhoods. Hey, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, they're, there's no doubt. You know, look at all these cars around here. A lot of, you know, most of these you see around here are stolen. They're getting stripped. Yes. Yeah. You know? Uh, so I believe, you know, my. If I were to get in the first year, uh, within the first year, I, you know, I would want to see a 100% ban starting downtown, and then have a plan drawn up so it expands outwards. Mm 
throughout the whole city. Why don't you start out and not want to come in? Well, you have to start from somewhere, you know what I mean? I, I feel like it's easier to drive around farther, you know? You're in for a change because you know what happens every time you do this? This is the dumping ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, and that may be something to look at. So. I would like to bring out all the groups together, bring everybody together. There's a communicate. River right in the middle. You can go from here. Oh yeah, right. There. But even just starting off 100 percent band, you know, like we have the people, we have the equipment. Let's get us removed. I don't, I don't care. I, I have zero tolerance. So, uh, yeah. And if they refuse to go, yeah. uh, say how buy you bus ticket wherever you want to go. You get the hell out. I, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. I think. Yeah. I think they should bring back the poor farms again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it's not the farm farm was amazing. Amazing. Farm yeah. 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 So the biggest thing now. Yeah, I know, I agree. They can make their own food. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it worked many years ago, but that was before mm -hmm. all this. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's, you know, well, my, being yeah, sufficient. My, my partner is back there in the back. And I've told him, like, always, so always continues to tell me. So all that. Uh, uh, but I, I bring up stuff, like I brought stuff up like that to her, you know, and then even like, so there, there's so many things that someone like that, well, hey, we have to have support from the state and so on, like that for, for the farm camps. But the, uh, it's like the prison system, you know, throughout the country. Canada is, they pay, you know, they, they, their, their, their prison system, they pay their, the prisoners $15 an hour, they will work on dairy farms, stuff like that, that the prison right. owns, and taxpayers pay nothing for the prisons. You know, so oh. I was like, you know, why are we not doing that here? Because they found a way to make money off it. Absolutely. You know, Ivy Lakes is doing it. Found a way to make money off it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. But they, they, they do that with everybody, okay. so I'll just wait. <laughs> Quite honestly, Chad and I kind of have a little bit of a relationship. We oh, work about two blocks from each other. Oh, really? Yeah. Construction. <laughs> okay. And we both have a lot of the exact same ideas. So, so you live in the Pearl? No, 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 uh, no, our uh, offices are two blocks. Oh, your offices? Yeah, not even two okay. blocks. <laughs> I, I live in Lentz. Oh, I, I, so. I live right by Lentz Park. Okay. Oh, so my I neighbor. Know exactly what you people You're are talking neighbor. about. Yeah. Um, I work in Northeast Portland, so does Chad. And we just today, uh, about two hours before we got off, somebody blew up an SUV. <laughs> then they got stolen. Um, you know, five gallons of gas and an SUV, stolen SUV makes a really good flame. Um, that's our neighborhood. And, you know, at, every day when we come to work, there's a couple of streets parked along Whitt Whitaker and Marks and that area that um, are, they slowly get chopped every day. There's yep. more pieces missing. And then it slowly yep. works its way out into traffic. Yep. Um, neither of us are politicians. Neither of us are taking any money from anybody. We have not accepted not one dime in political contributions. Um, I was an administrator for a construction company for 20 years. I recently bought the company. I took it over from my, one of my employers died and the other one wanted to retire. So I am now one of the few female owners of a blazing <laughs> company here in Portland. And because of the nature of my business, I see a lot of the destruction and a lot of the non-accountability. And I think the whole purpose of both of our campaigns is common sense and <coughs> accountability. Um, I am a bookkeeper, so I go. like to know where the money is going. And I've worked on some of these buildings that are quote unquote um, low income housing. Mm -hmm. Only thing is you never see anybody low income in them. <laughs> um, and when you were talking about the money, just to address some of your issues. Um, the three corners, the copper penny, mm -hmm. where the copper penny yeah. used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we won the contract for all three of those properties. But Portland has this thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> anything over $100,000, you have to do what they call um, work source training. And at the time, we were not union. We are union now, we had to. Um, but the only people in our trade that offered workforce training was the union. And if the union wouldn't do a one-job agreement with you, you couldn't do the job or you got penalized because you couldn't meet their requirements. So we turned back two of the contracts and we kept the contract for the one corner where the farmer's market was for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And um, we were, everything was boom, 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 rush, 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 rush. 
We met with the city on a regular basis, trying to show them that we were trying to meet their requirements. We, you know, I'm obviously a minority and a female. Um, so, they, but I don't count. <laughs> even then, even though I was just an employee. You weren't one of their buddies. I wasn't one of their buddies. Um, but we built the one corner and it's at empty for mm -hmm. nine months to a year. With, I mean, you didn't see not one single plant in any one of those windows. The other company came in probably, it went back out for bid again when we turned back the other two corners. And um, it, the company in California won the bid. Well, they couldn't meet work, work source requirements either. So it went back out for bid a third time and the union, one of the union shops got it. So the price of the building went up by a lot. And it ended up being a private investor that the city gave money to because they were supposed to be low income housing. And the problem is, is that once again, no low income housing went there. There is a medical facility in the bottom of one and now you've got the Planet, uh, Planet Fitness in the other. Um, but they're just, there's no accountability, there's no, nobody like, nobody is telling you where the money is going. Um, part of the reason, I was actually the first person to throw my hat in the ring, um, because I was watching the news one night and Joanne Hardesty was speaking, and I was angry. I was very angry and very frustrated. And my fiance's like, just shut up and run. <laughs> um, I'm kind of like Chad, we're not really, we would love to win. We, we understand that we're not throwing the money that Renee or the name, they have some great ideas, but I don't think they live in the same planet that we live in. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they, they don't have to drive by it every day. They don't have to see it They're at the market. They're a total pole than we all are. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was clear. You uh, can't yeah. see it. Well, we're, we're going to talk to you, not at you. Right. I am so tired of people telling me what I'm going to do. The whole defunding of the police is a prime example. Nobody asked anyone in this room if we wanted to defund the police. And the only people I know that wanted to defund the police are the criminals. Um, yeah, and as far as the measure you were talking about with the, the, the drugs, they lied, mm -hmm. flat out lied when they put that on the ballot. People did not understand what they were voting for. It said minor drug offenses. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sorry, I don't consider meth, heroin, crack, any of that a minor drug offense. It's not marijuana. It's not, <laughs> let's face it, you know, it's, it's a whole different animal. I don't see a bunch of stoners out there stealing my car. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're too busy at home, you know, eating potato chips. Um, it's, it's just, it's very frustrating right now that nobody's listening to us. And um, I still owe chat lunch. Uh, <laughs> so speaking of not listening, but... Um, the status quo is just throwing more money at it. Thank well, and that's just yeah. it. They're, they keep throwing stupid money at stupid things. Because it's lining somebody's pocket. Okay, so just for a prime example, he works, in, he works right down the street from where I work. We're in an industrial neighborhood up there. And they decided in their infinite wisdom to put these stupid little cones at every um, turn. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, first of all, none of the semis that live, that work on our street could get, of course could make not. that corner. Those things were gone within a week. Um, they put them in front of the post office, right there on 122nd and Prescott. Mm -hmm. Is that Prescott? Mm -hmm. okay. And um, I almost got T-boned four times in two weeks because people, I would pull forward into the little area there and people were waiting to turn. But the people behind me that wanted to go to the post office, because normally you just line up there and then you kind of go if everybody else. <laughs> and um, so to me that's stupid money all these things that they're doing to our roads That's with silly. these. Okay, I'm sorry, in bike lanes. Bike lanes. If I see a guy riding a bike and holding on to another one, it's stolen. You think? <laughs> um, I called the police recently and um, there was somebody chopping a car right in front of my warehouse. And uh, the mechanic across the way, his English isn't great, so he came over and he asked me to call. So I called and I said, there's a stolen vehicle being chopped right in front of our building. 
And 911, when I got her on the phone finally, was like, well, how do you know it's stolen? Mm -hmm. And yes. I said, well, people don't usually chop up their vehicle in front of my right. house. <laughs> um, kind of obvious. She's like, well, is there a license plate? I said, no, there's no license plate. She goes, well, can you walk around to the back of the car and tell me if there's a license plate there? And I'm like, did you not just hear me say that he has a sawzall in his hand? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Well, then we find out the cop actually did finally show up several hours later. Um, there was one police officer working from Pearl District to Gresham, Park Rose, to, I think, Boss, or Powell, maybe Division Powell. One officer that handles the crime. Um, gunshots. Every night I hear gunshots. I don't know how many of you have a ring video, but um, you get those little neighborhood alerts. <laughs> and uh, it's like just repeated over and over and over and over. And the the homeless crisis. I'm, I believe in a hand up, not a hand out. And we're too busy just throwing money and voucher, the, these vouchers. Uh, these vouchers are driving me nuts. I work my ass off. I go to work at 5 o'clock in the morning. I got home at 5.30 this evening. I work 10, 10 to 12 hour days on average. Why am I paying for everybody else? Mm -hmm. um, I firmly believe in helping those who are willing to help themselves. And we have some great, as Chad mentioned, we have some amazing programs here in Portland. Jean's Place, transition, Veterans Transition Housing, Portland Rescue Mission. They have inpatient, they have outpatient services. But people have to want to go yes. to them and to accept their help. Yes. The program that you mentioned. If we would support these programs more instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Um, like the Wapa 2, the, the city that's, that's that, why we Oh, like. I was so angry over that. Okay, first of all, we, we now have this stupid law, this arts tax, that was only supposed to last oh, two yeah. years, oh, yeah. that has been on our books. I, I actually sent mine back in and I just got a double bill because I sent it back in with a thing that said illegal tax on it. <laughs> um, to put sweaters on statues downtown, and we can't reuse any of the sweaters. One percent of all construction in a public facility goes to arts. Yeah. So Wapato, they spent over a hundred thousand dollars on artwork. Yeah. Not to mention the millions of dollars that they put into this quote-unquote prison, and I'm only going to call it a prison because that's what it was meant to be. But it doesn't, shouldn't have the stigma of being a prison because it was never actually occupied. Yeah. So you have this building that they built that had a gym. It had a commercial grade kitchen. Mm -hmm. It had individual housing. Mm -hmm. Medical facilities. Medical facilities. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they wouldn't Lovely. put anybody there is they said there's no access to services. Okay, so here's an How idea. Did you build it there? Bring services in <coughs> there. Is it really that difficult to send a counselor to make a deal with OHSU to bring nurses, to bring people there to help veterans? There, there are so many services out there that people don't know are there and that they qualify for. Um, I've done a lot of work over the years with veterans. I've been part of the FW for, my mom signed me up when I think when I was 14. So. Um, post 3440 abandoned, thank you. Um, <laughs> a lot of these people have no idea what's available to them. No. Um, I have a good friend that just passed away. His name was Don Reed. And Don worked for VFW Post. He was also a post commander. And part of what he did was go meet with veterans and explain what benefits are available, what government programs are available. Nobody's doing that with these people. You know, there, there are programs out there. There are drug services out there. We have thrown so much money at these things. And, you know, Harvesty, she bothers me. She's just an angry yes, woman. She does it, yeah. um, yes. And now I'm sounding like an angry woman. So. <laughs> um, I've never seen somebody so racist. Um, yep. It, it just, yeah, yeah. well, but yeah, the, the, the contractor that had the, um, I support Blue Lives Matter, 
and she cut all of all of these um, public contracts. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think it was you that said, "Who gave this woman the right to do these things? Who gave this Please woman the right not, to do this?" It's not her. No, but Ted Wheeler's a wimp. Yeah. yeah. That's and the only reason Ted Wheeler was re-elected as the woman that was running against him was worse than Horrible. he was. Horrible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 spoiled rich kid as well. Yeah. yeah. So. And I was so happy to watch that man get maced. But at least we um, still have a few cops. <laughs> we do. If she had won, we would have none. I used to be, <laughs> years ago, yeah. in my younger days, I was a bartender and a waitress. I know a lot of these officers. <clears throat> oh, Christ, I worked at Bob the Big Boy for years. Um, they used to all sit at the counter. We have some great police officers in this town. Yeah, we have some assholes, but we have some really good police officers. And like he said, right now we're villainizing our police. We're not supporting them. And if you told me every day what a horrible job I'm doing and how I'm lucky to have my job and that I'm gonna fire you tomorrow, I'd probably tell you where to blow. <laughs> um, it's just, we need to start supporting these people. We need to bring them back. I'm also against the bonuses because there's no incentive for the people who are here doing the job currently that are doing it well. I very much support police accountability and body cameras, as you mentioned. They, they, they do protect everyone involved. And if you're doing something bad, Punish the police officer. Don't start shit, won't be shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, stop villainizing the police and deifying the criminals. Um, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I very much was disheartened by what happened to Mr. Floyd, but the fact that he was your poster boy really bothered me. Um, you have a, a, a young nurse that died, you had another gentleman that was jogging, that was chased through a neighborhood. Those should have been your poster people. Yeah. Not a career criminal. Yeah. That um, has, that's not the people I want to protect. Yeah. Um, we, we need more systems in place. We do need, I, I also don't think that the, the neighborhood watch, <laughs> if you want to call it, um, everybody was screaming when the gentleman got shot at Lens Park about how we didn't bring in this community response. Well, the reason that we couldn't bring in this community response is every single phone call said there's a man waving a gun in the middle of Holgate. They don't count if there's a And I, I, I don't know all of the circumstances because we're not being given, we're not being given numbers, we're not being given real data. And that also bothers me because I am a numbers girl. <laughs> He's a numbers guy. Um, I don't know if he was mentally ill. I don't know what the circumstances were. But there was a gun. And I'm sorry, I will never, ever fault a police officer when somebody's pointing a gun. I was there. And the officers were demanding for him to uh, put his hands up and come out. Yeah. He would not do that. He did not give them a choice. That's what Tim said. He didn't give a choice. I, th I have a question. Go ahead. <coughs> Do you guys have more than $16,000 in debt on any <laughs> 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 And so do you gamble quite a bit? <laughs> I do have an email though, you can ask Lens Market. Okay. Uh, my friend Tim just retired from I'm there. I'm sorry, that was kind of snarky. No, no I, I, I watched the same thing you did, and I question. also checked the numbers um, and what she was worth before she went into office and yeah. what she's worth now, uh -huh. which is public record, by the way. Yeah. And it's substantial. Yeah. And plus, you wanted to um, oversee the police bureau. That's kind of interesting when you want to, in turn, sue them. I, I do want to sue them, and I've course. never attacked an Uber driver. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just... I, I know the gas station that she's talking about also, and I'm sorry, but I broke down there a few times. It's the best lit gas station along my butt. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, <laughs> I wish you two were not running for the same seat. <laughs> we actually said that already once. <laughs> we met a year, about a year ago, and 
Well, we didn't. We, we yeah, sat. but you know, it's not for two, position two. Well, yeah, we, well, we, we talked for like, you know, <laughs> when we first met, we talked. It was we're, much we're of our office. Pitching. Yeah, you know, we were both playing, and I think we spent like two hours there at our office. It was just BS, and I'm like, yeah, this is major issues. And then once, uh, once we both had our names in, then we put it together. And then we you know, when I, when I reached out to her and I was like, hey, you want to do lunch? <laughs> and, uh, she's like, yeah, absolutely. And then uh, she told me where her office was at. And I was like, holy crap, I know you. <laughs> you know? And she's like, oh, yeah. Well, don't, so. don't downplay the grassroots efforts. Um, Not at all. I think it's really important that well, you, you know, speak no, Neither one of us is a candidate. We are business owners. We live and work in this neighborhood. But your voice we is don't live someplace heard. fancy. We, we live here. This is, this is where our families work. We have friends that That's live and work out of town, businesses that are being destroyed. And I'm sorry, you, you keep putting your arm well, what, up and what, everybody else ignored you. Oh, the lady sorry, behind. Sorry, sorry. Go yep. ahead. Um, my question, I understand that Portland is the last city with, of our size that we have our archaic form of government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We can't get five people to agree on anything. It never so, well done. Yeah. How are you going to get 12 people? Well, yeah, yeah right, right, because every <clears throat> district will have to have their own yeah. representation. And, and then, even then, they're only going to be doing, uh, basically voting on walls and stuff like that. They're not really going to be running anything in the city besides budget, budgetary and creating malls. So, like parking malls and stuff like that, traffic enforcement. Uh, it's, it'll take a lot of control away from the commission. Well, like, it'll take all control away from the commission. And it'll leave the mayor and the city manager, but it's city manager in charge with the mayor over overseeing the city manager. So mm -hmm. I tell you what, if we had that 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 yeah. structure now, that's the mayor that we have. Yeah, well, the mayor fuck. should never have been chief of police. Yeah. It just it, right. It, it, there's a conflict of interest there inherent, and like with what Chad said earlier about wanting, walking around downtown looking for a police officer. I haven't been downtown in almost two years, not just because of COVID, but there's no place to park. No, there's a park. No, there's it's filthy areas. It's filthy. Public transit. You yeah. can get the ways. <laughs> yeah, about public transit. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, only when I'm really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I have a question. Go ahead. If you won, what would happen to your business? I actually, we actually discussed that because we did. I did recently just take over this business, and I've been there twenty years. Um, my fiance bought the business with me, and come July, he's actually quitting his job to come to work and take over part of the business. And if we did win, I, you know, we have people to take over our positions. I mean, obviously, I would still be involved with my business, but this would be a job. I don't think some people are looking at this as a job. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm going to say flat out, I don't have all the answers. I can't tell you where we're going to put all these homeless people or where we're going to get all this mental health. All I can say is that I will listen to what anybody has to say. I won't let my own views and values interfere with my job. Well, we listened to Mingus. He hasn't, once he got elected, we were nothing. Exactly. We listened to Dan. Right. Once he got elected, <laughs> that was it. Well, Dan's actually working right now, but that's only because he knows that his position's up for grabs. Right. <laughs> but he's not, I'm sorry, the way he wants to do it, it's not no. the it's way not it works. No. It's the way that's lining somebody's pockets. If Would you actually know pockets? what the foster floodplain is and where it is? John, the Johnson Creek foster floodplain, where it comes together? <laughs> well, just <laughs> ask me. <laughs> um, yeah. um, it's unfortunate I, I, that he didn't know where it was mm -hmm. or what it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> because that's where he went to these camps. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, camp. so. My office used to be, before we moved to the shop I'm on, was out on Sheldon Road, just off of Foster. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I drove through that flood on several occasions. Um, and I happen to drive, well, I'm driving the SUV tonight, but I also have a Mustang convertible, which was my primary car for the longest time. And then we had to get this because we have large dogs. Um, but, uh, yeah, my, my car didn't like that area. <laughs> 
It, uh, and right there in front of Franz is just disgusting. Okay. Well, you know, we spent a lot like, of time and money making it beautiful. We spent a lot of time. Moved a lot of homes well, to look, make it beautiful. Look how much money now. we dumped into the, the trail. We can't and use it. And now, I can't ride my bicycle on that trail. I would no. walk on that trail armed. No. <laughs> uh, it's... And then they, what they did to Foster is just appalling. It's um, a nightmare. I have it's friends like that own here. businesses on Foster. And um, when they took away that whole lane of traffic for to put some plants oh in, um, that's once again, it's more money that got spent that I don't recall anybody ever asking if we wanted this because they're not going to. In this area, we are one of the fastest growing areas in Portland. You shoved all these new houses up here on the hill with no extra roads, and then you took, instead of adding the land of traffic, you took one away. On um, all the major arteries going into town. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. And Holgate, it, Foster, all of them. Everything. We took yep. away a lane on Holgate and made it a bike lane. <laughs> okay. Once again, in my neighborhood, I have a couple of professional bike riders. We have a couple of recreational bike riders, and I have a whole lot of thieves. I mean, they don't call us felony flats for nothing. No. Right. Um, and why we why they needed a whole lane of traffic because they don't ride in it. <laughs> it's because a lot of the people in leadership were big avid bikers. Look at that. Look at the this Rose. is Oregon. It rains here. <laughs> the, the Rose Porter Project. Oh my God. Rose oh, Porter. You know, that's aimed towards. That's just bicycles. Yeah. That's all I care about. And yeah. we don't, do they charge any bicycles to license them? No. no. And so. every time they propose a new shelter or it's always low here. income housing, <laughs> did you notice that we have like four of them just along 92nd? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's because we're low it's income. It's not downtown. We, no we don't have the voice. We don't, yeah. we don't live in. Well, you live in a nice neighborhood. Oh, yeah, I live in a nice neighborhood. Because <laughs> it makes her happy. That's you earned your neighborhood. <laughs> um, I've lived but in place all my life, and it's the end of the world. It is. And I don't even know where we come. And I'm going to be honest. I don't know where to even start at this point, other than to listen to the people and start somewhere. Do something. Get the people off the streets. Exactly. Get there people were, I mean, that are drug addicted out of the you army. You can't even off stop at 7 Eleven without getting hit up no. by four different people. Yeah. Wow. They closed the 7 no. Eleven down. Mm -hmm. They yeah. closed it. Yeah, well, and the, the kid you that got shot. I drive by that picture every day. Yes. And that poor kid, all he was doing was defending his girlfriend. And yeah. some guy walked up and shot him in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's just. You should take a little ride, both of you should take a ride when you go down the hill. We That's have. a really great view there of what's happening. <laughs> uh, but yeah, also the that. other one is, this is a major max station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, for the last, I know it's been at least six years, but the last three to four years, there's been one guy there that has started out small, but now they've totally taken over the entire entrance to the Mac station. Do oh, you yeah. think that we could use that? There's no way. You and you know what? Foster. You'll be able to see all the fires when you leave because it'll be dark. And it's it, caught, it's 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 it it's caught fire the other night. Yeah. And my husband said, yeah, you're going to call. And I said, no way. No. I hope it burns. Absolutely. There was yeah. two right by our shop just recently also. Oh. And like I said, he lives, he works. Keep saying live, sorry. We live <laughs> It's just. It's major. I'm pretty sure that car you were talking about is still there. I drove by it today. The red one? Or the, well, the I don't know what color it is now. It's all completely oh, stripped apart and like burned up. Oh, you're well, about the public storage right there on 135th. They lit a they took fire gas gallons <coughs> of acid and we think it used mm -hmm. to be a Tahoe. Um, yeah. And uh, they actually chased him because it, it created a really big explosion about two o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> well, there's been o open fires on this uh, the storage unit down here twice. I yeah. filmed it twice. No, it totally I used to have burned it down on one side. Well, that whole area. I used to have a, a storage there. <laughs> yeah. I actually moved my storage. And well, the poor lady can't even have a gun on the property because they will not allow her to arm herself. She takes a baseball bat to run people off the property. I take and a she's large in her 60s. That's crazy. I am. Uh, we've, I, where that, my lot is, we actually, <coughs> we border Costco. And that whole trail back behind Costco is also filled. 
And uh, I can't tell you how many times I've come to work at five o'clock in the morning and there's been somebody, my dog does this, uh, he's got a great big boy bark mm -hmm. and he does this Fig Newton thing, but the problem is he also does it for bunnies. So I never really know if it's a person or a bunny. <laughs> 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 um, but, you know, um, and then he, <coughs> I keep listening to these people. They keep wanting to, like I said, make laws that impact my life without asking me. Yeah. Uh, what is that taxation? Well, how can they make these laws? And all because like you said, turn around there's a new tax. They're all attorneys. And I never <laughs> voted on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, or, or you vote I, on you know, it without realizing it. When he said, it, well, I never said, voted on it. People are willing to pay this extra one percent. I'm not. He's not. I'm not. Um, well, it says two, we're, we're, one to 2% at the time. Well, and the new more business more tax that they just passed, yeah, you know, that we have to do. Okay, did I'm barely making that? it as it is because I had to join uh, the yes, union we last year. We did. And no, no. just trying to Why keep our people know? employed. Is, I understand that. I can't find anybody that voted yes for it. So, that one that passed a few years ago that uh, was supposed to help with mental health and it failed miserably twice and then all of a sudden they cut all these <laughs> mental health programs yes. and then everybody ran it that was on these mental health programs ran out and voted it through well they, that's what they told us anyway um, once again I don't know anybody who voted for that but once they did run out and vote for that program <clears throat> and they got their money they didn't reinstate not one no. of those programs not Me one too. nothing so, once again, where's the money going? I'm saying. Yeah. So, I have a quick question. I'm, I'm afraid that all the good people that are running for Hardest to see is going to be divided the vote, and Hardest is going to get her section. So, how do the primaries work? And that's, that's is it the yeah, top two so finishers? How does it's, 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 it's the top two advance on. And so, if one person gets over 50%, they win automatically. There's no. That's not going to happen. But it's going to no. be. Yeah, it's not going to Possible on either position that's real running. But I'm just but afraid you guys are splitting. Auditors, city one you well, guys are going to split the, the, the good is, vote, and Harvey's is going to get, you know. No, I, think, I, I think what's going to happen. She's raised over $200,000. I know. So yeah. she, she's got support. She's which got is a lot of support. Going to there. And I, I don't know what it is. I, 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 I no, I, she's got, I she's got the mob. No, she's got the rap all that lining that lining their pockets. Well, and that, that woman that ran against Ted Wheeler was, that was the radical left, and she if one is ahead. Well, not by much, not though. Not by much, but can you believe that? Yeah. That was shocking. Oh, yeah, that was shocking. Bad. We'd all be riding bicycles right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like my car. Thank you. And so, just two people come out of the primary. Is that how that just works? Two. Just two. Yeah. She's got so after that it doesn't like, mean that the general population like her. Yeah, her well her you know, Vlad, likes her. Her Vlad and Renee have all raised over two hundred thousand dollars. You know. Right. So uh, Dale um, Dale's running for nothing. Yeah, Dale also. Dale he disappeared. He was just here when I came in. <laughs> he was um, here? Yeah, yeah, Dale he was, was standing in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, Dale's a really, really nice guy. Oh no, uh, he, I, I, I know who he is. I just didn't Dale see him. actually not, has some amazing ideas. He does. He's not interested in in becoming a pet commissioner. Well, no, he's not. He's not. He told me that out front. He just he's just tired of the homeless people. Yeah. Dale Dale is very honest, transparent. He yeah. Said he spent some time in prison. He came out. He was homeless, and he he's even said you know people. He says there's a lot of programs in place. He's like, so when I was yeah. dealing with these, he said there's a lot of programs. And he said they're great programs. And he said they help them dramatically. He said, but you have to be willing to accept the help. And mm -hmm. Dale is actually out in the streets talking to the people. homeless people mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And Dale has actually made a written plan. And uh, It's a good one. <laughs> you know, he's just a really, generally, a really, really nice guy. But well, I would say he doesn't want to be a commissioner. He's just like, you know, I just want mm -hmm. somebody threw, that's going to... He threw his hat in the ring you know. to make other people step up. Yeah, but that's yeah. Statement, you know. And like what you said about people moving in. I, on, I do know this for a fact, that other <coughs> cities are handing their homeless people bus tickets. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They've sent them here. Yeah. I actually have a friend that lives in Hawaii, and Hawaiians are pissed right now because Montana's been giving them plane tickets. <laughs> But Hawaii's giving them plane tickets too. Yeah, they're coming home. <laughs> okay. We're back. They, they it, it's harder to swim home. The, the, city, <laughs> the city of Portland will give you a bus ticket out. However, unlike the other 49 states, 
they will uh, they verify that there is someone at the bus station at the other end. <laughs> that the Thank person God. that we're giving a ticket, we're, we're going to spend the money to we send them sure back when they came come back. back. We want to know that there is someone at the other end that is guaranteeing they have a place to live, mm -hmm. that they're not going to be on the street where they're going. Not to say that they're not lying on the other end, mm -hmm. but we do verify that they have a place to go, and frequently they claim that they have jobs. And our <laughs> Portland police will call and verify that they have a job to go to <laughs> before they fork up the money for the ticket. And I've heard some of my officers say, yeah, and I give them 20 bucks for food because you gotta eat. Okay. Penny will run you for, for city council. You're on the you're on the city council. So I just have three announcements I didn't get to do earlier because we had such a rush with Vadim and Renee and <laughs> Shariah and everybody else. But anyway, so we have our weekly West for up clean up and that's on the agenda if you're interested. <coughs> our friend Monty is looking for someone to come out and help him at Playhaven Park and I understand you've signed up, right, Marilyn? Yes. Okay, so he's going to show people how to remove ivy and blackberry. He's going to be working up here at Playhaven where there's a lot of blackberries. Nine to noon or something? Nine to noon. And then, and then um, that's, Saturday. that's Saturday. That's Saturday. And then Sunday, the next day after that, we're doing our Easter Sunday breakfast at the VFW. Nine to whenever we get done talking. And you guys are more than welcome to come join us. We do this once a month to support the VFW. And they're doing their ham special for Easter Sunday. And he's going to have bunny rabbits. He's going to sell a little stuffed bunny rabbits if anyone wants to buy one. So that that's it. Can, can, yeah, yes, one more thing you can. The camera. Yes, you can. Uh, my, my personal cell phone number is 503-867-1721. Do I and, have it on my list? Uh, don't know if you do or not. Okay. I mean, that, that's... Uh, well, like I said, it's my personal cell yeah, number, yeah, yeah. and it will always be my personal cell number. So even if, if okay, I get on is, the council, what is it again? Uh, 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 503 uh -oh. 867 1721. 1721. So if anyone gets a hold of me, I have his number. Yeah, if anybody wants to call or, or ask questions or, you know. You know, you have friends or whatever. That's Keep curious. speaking your truth. That's right. Keep yeah, I mean, that's right. what I'm. Uh, and everybody I keep running across and talking to, I'm like, you know, I'm actually, I'm kind of harsh with with, with my ideas. And people are like, no, oh, we're no, just we not like that. We need and harsh. You know, we, we need, need that, harsh. You know? That's why I like to. We need the truth. Well, yeah, absolutely. Politically yep. correct. Yeah. But I think oh, we're not happy. politicians. I'm out to piss off people. We're your neighbors. I like <laughs> so I, I like, I don't care if I don't make it. Look at our Facebook page. Anybody. You would know who we were. <laughs> we would called every name in the book. Anyway. Thank you both for coming out here. We have a website. The well. other link that's on there. We is, have is, a website. I, I read through several yeah. of those yeah. issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, from, from, from the Croft? Yes. yes. I, I kind of liked yes. from the Croft. Yes. <laughs> One of our members. Oh, wow. So we are oh, adjourned. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.